Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be about uh, a short range forecast. Uh, I haven't done this in a while. I've used to, I used to do these around Christmas time last year, uh, these short range updates, and they were fairly popular, but I just, I just ceased to stop doing them. Uh, I don't know why exactly, but uh, I'm returning them back in. Today is going to be a short range forecast about the chill down the cool down and it's gonna be pretty chilly for the next couple of days uh so this is not the long range this is a short range uh before we get into this video if you'd like to subscribe to this channel do so uh you know check out this channel check out my other videos and really please consider doing so uh thank you so right now we're looking at uh, the gfs model and you can see based on what the, we're just going to be going out to or say 180 hours and that's about it so if we go out you can see right now it's a uh, moderate pattern no, no really or you can see no uh no big troughing there is one starting right here but in terms of over here it's just fairly zonal and there, there's some pockets of chillier air in the southeast but there is uh, uh a heat a warning a heat advisory for the texas area and uh and this basically means that uh these you know these locations have really warm temperatures and that what that's what was forecasted uh for the next uh, i would say you know 10 days it seems like the heat will be suppressed to the outer rims of the country or maybe a little bit more in this part of the country but generally over here should be rather chilly if we go further we could see that say we move on to our 12th Sorry about that. Uh, if we go to hour 12 and further beyond that, you can see how this uh, high pressure starts making its way down to the south and along at, or along with that. Or, uh, not really high pressure, it's more of a low pressure, but if you, uh, as, along with that, you could see that or, uh, the, if, we go, if, we, if we were to go to the 2 meter temperature anomaly, chillier air comes along with it. So let's just go back to the MSLP precip rain and frozen. I don't, I don't re we don't really need the frozen part yet. I mean, it's August. Most things are liquid at this point, rather than far in the mountains. But if you were to look at this, you could see that uh, the high pressure is uh, high in charge, and it brings pretty chillier conditions to a good portion of the country. Uh, and this is around Saturday the weekend now. And you can see that uh, it does stave away, or it kind of does stay away from the texas area oklahoma arkansas here it's going to be fairly warm even in a short range and in the long range it looks as well so get prepared but uh I'll cross here chillier conditions definitely uh you know uh, approaching and you can see here's like the like the center of that uh you know that cooler air mass and you can see it affects anywhere from the plains to the northeast and and that will uh, be you know noticeable as we go further, notice how there's a second one right over here that goes down, and this also makes its way into the northeast, brings chillier temp temps. However, it gets a little bit warmer across uh, the southwest and uh, southeast, and that's, you know, after that we go into the long range, but a very dry pattern, especially for the center part of the country, very dry, even for the south, I mean... Really, just a couple of complexes, maybe right over here. here uh, but even if they do form, it's a hit or miss. It's not going to affect everyone that's under that. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a thunderstorm, so it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really, uh, you know, affect a widespread area. It's pretty isolated, and that's what it will be. It's isolated in nature. It's August. Many storms around this time of the year are pretty isolated and do not necessarily uh, produce lots of, uh, you know, widespread damage or even rain, which a lot of people need. If we go to the two-meter temperature anomaly, and let's go back to, I'll just show you what I showed about and up until uh, with the MSLP and precip, but now we'll show it with using the two meter temperature anomaly and you can see that exactly uh basically warmer across the northwest warmer across the southwest warmer across parts of the southeast and you can see the northeast not looking too incredibly warm either rather chilly and then we see that cooler air mass starting to make its way into the u.s nothing record breaking it doesn't seem but definitely a nice relieving air mass for 
uh, a good chunk of the country that many people will, will like. But notice how it stays pretty warm across Texas, parts of the southeast. But, uh, but you can see it gets reinforced, especially during the day. You can see this is during the night, 6 Z Saturday. That is around 2 o'clock in the morning. The temperature contrasts are more favorable towards the warm. So the nights maybe not be as chilly, and that makes sense. There's since it's summer, and usually when it's cool, it's usually more more noticeable in the daytime. And look at that. That is the daytime. You can see a good chunk of the country is below average but based on the GFS. I think it may be a little bit overdone, but it stays around for quite a while. There's a reinforcement right here across, uh, across the northern plains and the northeast. So it seems like the northern country will be, say, or you, you can see it will stay below average but then if we were to go further into long range we could be looking at a warm-up going across into the country but uh for the short range forecast i would have to mark this out i would say good uh, yeah about this portion of the country should expect cold slash chilly and you could see if we were if we were to look at this part of the country uh the northwest uh, mainly the northwest you could see that california nevada maybe not too warm but uh Definitely Texas being warmer and parts of the southeast, but uh, you know this cool down will affect more people than the warm than the warm weather will. If we go to uh, 150 right now, I want to show you that you can see it starts warming up, and then just quickly look into long range, just kind of like a little quick scope. You could see uh, it gets it gets, starts getting warmer and the cold air gets kind of pushed off. But that is just one model. Let's look at the ensemble model uh, ensemble model and this is the GEFS two meter temperature anomaly so you could see uh, up until now chillier across the north though it's again it's warmer across the west and southwest and parts of the southeast then it gets a little bit chillier the cool air tries making its way in but then the warm still stays there and uh, the, day, the sun is hot, daytime heating is hot, anytime you get quite a good chunk of sun. And you need, uh, you, you know, you get above average temperatures because you need a pretty cloud, you know, cloud cover, uh, overcast, or a pattern shift, which at this point there is going to be one, but you can see after, I would say, the hour 200, it, it's, it starts going away. If you look at the at the European model, let's go to 500 millibar, 500 millibar hype anomaly, and this basically shows you where the troughs and ridges are. You can see a well-defined trough right there, and so this basically shows us cooler temperatures across a good chunk of the country, possibly across the northwest as well, potentially a little ridge developing, and we're just going to go out to our 144, just since this is a short-range forecast, and you can see um, some... Uh, some may be warming across the west, but de generally the main point is that the short range forecast looks chilly for the north, especially the northern plains, the northeast, the midwest, Ohio Valley, and parts of the uh, southern plains. But then as you go into, maybe not the southern plains, but just the plains, but if you go into the southern plains, Texas, Texarkana area, southeast, you could be looking at warmer conditions, and if you look at uh, California, Oregon, Washington, you know, also looking fairly chilly uh, for the next five to six days. But after that, we could be looking at a big warming pattern, uh, which uh, if I don't know if the CFS really represents that. Um, let's go to two meter temperature anomaly seven days. So you can see, yeah, they're showing that cooler temperatures across the north and then starting to kind of dwindle and then the warmth starting to take over, which, you know, which basically I think will happen. Um, but you may not, you know, maybe a little bit over exaggerated at this point. But if you look at the 8 to 14 day outlook, they do show the warmth. But since this is a short range, I just want to focus on the 6 to 10 day. You could see below average conditions. Um, mainly the, the cool weather would occur already within before the 6 uh, sixth day. And uh, between the 6 to 10 day, it's kind of like that pattern shift and the warmer starts encroaching on that cooler air. And uh, in terms of precip, you can see above average for kind of like the mid-sector of the country, but definitely below average for the southwest and parts of the northeast. But we'll have to see about the northeast. That is not a given yet. Uh, if we were to, uh, again, I would just want to show you the uh, precipitation, but of the GFS. So just giving you kind of like the raw data. Let's go to total accumulated precip, and let's go to the older model run since that one is still processing, the newest one. 
and let's give you the one that actually you know is there and right, that is actually uh, in place you can see uh, the amounts aren't ridiculous anywhere really uh here so flooding does not seem to be a big concern but definitely severe thunderstorms uh could you know make a an inch or two of rain over a short period of time and that could cause still some flooding or uh some wind damage so that's you know not excluding that but it's just showing in general a large flooding area doesn't seem too likely generally uh, generous rains across much of but no deluge of any sort uh, at all across the country so that's basically it guys uh, fall temperatures are kind of underway for the next five days and then towards the end it starts warming up um and you know that's that's you know, it's typical. One time we have a warm face, then we have a cool face. I forecasted it's cool face. Then we could be looking at a warm face, which I already started forecasting a couple of days ago. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. And I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See y'all. Bye.